Um, so Peter, I'm going to introduce you now um, and then you can share your screen and present. Um, so Peter was born in Perth, completed his schooling and further study to become an architect. He worked in offices in Perth and London for five years, discovering that his affinity was for the delivery end of projects rather than the front end design. Uh, he returned to Perth, traveling over land throughout or through countries such as Afghanistan, Iran and Myanmar. He's been passionate about woodwork projects since the age of five, making a wide range of items such as both indoor and outdoor furniture, the building process for renovations and extensions, and a wide range of handyman tasks such as repair and modification. In 1978, he transferred from architecture to project management and business development, continuing up until retirement in 2014. Peter met his wife Louise in 1984 whilst in Perth, and they became parents to Isabel and Henry. Isabel and Henry both relocated to Melbourne in 2013 to pursue their career paths. Louise and Peter took the big step of following them and settling in Melbourne in 2020. He became a volunteer with Freedom Solutions in 2020 and has completed a range of projects. Apart from his association with Freedom Solutions, his other interests are cycling, cryptic crosswords, probus club activities, gardening, home modifications, and of course, his family. Peter, over to you. Thank you, Maeve. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can. So, in fact, it was my daughter, Isabel, or our daughter, Isabel, an OT, who encouraged me to join Solve, as it was in those days. And I have to say, it's one of the best decisions I've made. I really, really, really enjoy Solve and all the projects I do there. In in summary, the feeling that you generate when you hand over a project that you make that you know is making a difference to somebody's life is really wonderful. So, Maeve, perhaps you could uh, show my first slide. Have you got my presentation there? Um, Kayoko does, and she should be in the TAD lab there. So, Kayoko, okay. if you could. Well, I can, can talk about share? it anyway. Uh, yeah. Compared with Mike and Mark's presentations, <laughs> my, my projects are... Uh, probably along the more bush carpentry style, but nevertheless, I've made some customers very happy with them. So my first uh, project that I'm reviewing today is an interactive uh, iPad mount tabletop and what I'm calling a busy board, which is for a 26 year old fellow with multiple issues. And uh, his dear parents had discovered some years ago that he found very therapeutic, the use of iPads. There we are, lovely. So you can put the next one up, please. Thank you. Next one. Okay, here we are. Fellow that um, Muhammad, his name is, and uh, he really enjoyed the use of iPads, but he could become very violent. And unfortunately, his parents went through about four or five iPads because he would pick them up and throw them away. And that was the end of the brand new iPad. So they wanted to stick with the iPad notion. So the challenge for me was to develop a scheme where the iPad would be uh, tamper and removal resistant. And that could, that I developed a cradle in which this iPad would slide and the cradle would be fixed to the, a table, which I've made. And so the iPad can't be taken away and the cradle can't be moved. When he, when the customer is needs a change of therapy, the cradle and iPad can be removed and there's an overlay of what I'm calling a busy board or an activity board with a range of uh, cause and effect. Children's toys, basically, toy xylophones, things that go ring, uh, lights flash on and so forth. However, these items also need to be tied down because there's a great chance that he'll pick it up and throw it away. So the next slide, perhaps, please. So as I've said, the iPad mount needs to be uh, securely located to the tabletop in a cradle. I'm calling it a cradle. And the busy board needs to be attached, overlaid the table, as it were, and then securely fixed to the table so the busy board itself cannot be lifted up and again well dislodged or perhaps even thrown away so let's go to the next slide 
So I got their temper proof. So it probably does need to be temper proof as well, but also tamper proof. And the way I've located the iPad is to have four positioning pegs on the table and then what they call a star knob behind the canted panel to secure fixing so that the client, Mohammed, we trust is unlikely to reach around and want to undo this eye bolt or this star bolt, which requires many uh, revolutions before it becomes undone. So I'm quite confident that the uh, iPad mount won't go anywhere, so to speak. Can I have the next slide? And there's a picture of it. Um, front and view, back view, I've made the table, uh, I've fitted the table with additional holes so that the location of the screen can be, uh, can be uh, modified further back on the table if the customer wishes that for any reason. So that's the, that's the cradle I've made and uh, uh, that's it. So there's the busy board is the next one. So the challenge here was to in fact, work out how to restrain all these items that are going to be fixed on the top of the busy board. And through discussions with the occupational therapist, it was agreed that uh, cable ties would be the best way of doing this. Although they're sacrificial naturally, if they want to change the location of that item or toy, it was the best we could come up with. And I think it'll be very satisfactory. Underneath the, um, the busy board, I've put a 15 millimeter deep cleat, which means that uh, there's sufficient space underneath the board when it's located on the table for the table surface not to be damaged with the scratching of the cable uh, buckle, so to speak. And the table top or the busy board rather is secured to the table top with webbing straps on all four corners of the board and cam buckles, which are attached to the table legs. Very nifty devices are cam buckles. So perhaps the next shot, please. There we are. That was a typical layout. This fellow also requires, or he wants to have, the OT would like him very much to have a water play device, which meant I had to fashion up some cleats, which are in fact bolted down using bolts and wing nuts, uh, given that cable ties weren't suitable. And all of those other devices are held down one way or another with cable ties although some of them are a little bit uh, challenging because there is a control button on off switch or some sort of control on the back of the, the device. So for those uh, devices, uh, such as the one on the top right hand corner, I'm only going to be able to secure that through its handle and uh, trusting that uh, it will remain in place. The OT also very much wanted a Lumi light and a Lumi light is that device on the right. Uh, it's got a remo revolving strip of colored images inside and projects a light upwards. And she wanted, the OT wanted very much, Emily, her name is, wanted very much for this to be located on the table. And that really gave me some huge mental challenges because it's a circular object. And how am I to secure that on the table without Mohammed grabbing hold of it and throwing it away? So I flummed up that uh, that cradle, if you will, or that little cage. And uh, I believe that is uh, tamper-proof and all quite operating, uh, totally operable because it can be turned around within its base and the on-off switch located. So that's probably the story about the... Uh, the busy board and the iPad mount project. So perhaps the next slide then. Customized kitchen tipper for a lady with MS, lovely, lovely lady. And she wanted to maintain or continue with her uh, cooking, uh, but given her reduced strength, tipping large vessels such as fry pans was proving a great challenge to her. Now, I know that uh, many tippers have been made, but this one, our client, really wanted to have a, a range of vessels that were either tipped or 
receive what was being tipped. So that caused uh, quite a few mental challenges. So what I decided to do, I think we can have the next chat, uh, next slide. Uh, and so, of course, yes, there I said it can be uh, poured and uh, foodstuffs and efficiently removed in the poured position, tilted position. So moving along to the next slide, please. How am I going to make this tipper suitable for accommodating a range of vessels, both in the tipping mode and the receival mode? So I decided to make a cardboard prototype. And so off to Bunnings, I went and got many of their cardboard cartons and cut up, uh, cut these up and made a prototype and tested a range of vessels uh, to make sure that uh, my, there was a reasonable uh, sense of security that the proof of concept was going to work and actually took that out to the client and she was delighted, even with the cardboard replica. But of course, I had to explain to her, no, this is just a mock-up. Uh, you'll be seeing the genuine article. One of the other issues that I had to uh, challenge, uh, wrestle with was how to retain these vessels in place when they're being tipped. Now, I know that previous tippers have used uh, elastic bands or perhaps Oki straps or something like that. But I was concerned that our client's man manual weakness, so to speak, uh, would prevent that probably. So I came up with a, uh, a, a solution involving boomerang shaped tipping swivels, which meant that when the vessel was placed on the platform to be tipped, these swivels were, were, were free swiveling. And so in the tip position, the longer arm of the boomerang toggle, so to speak, would swing into vertical position, which meant that the horizontal leg of the, of the boomerang would be the retaining of the vessel. So there I've covered that. So next slide, perhaps, please. So there's a picture of the device I came up with um, working highly satisfactorily really really uh, pleased with uh, with the outcome there and the customer is very pleased as well in fact I'm a bit of an unusual uh, volunteer because I really like to follow up and know how satisfactorily my projects are performing and uh, some months after I did get in contact with Vicky and she uh, maintained that everything was working wonderfully wonderfully well so I kicked a bit of a goal there so perhaps that's uh, the end of the slides, I think, is it not? Yes, that's the end of my presentation. So um, thoroughly enjoyable projects. Bit of bush carpentry compared with Mark and Mike's projects, but nevertheless, I thoroughly enjoy them. Thank you. Peter, thank you so much. A wonderful presentation. Um, I had a question about the busy board and the mount. Um, how many touch points do you think on average you had with the occupational therapist and the family in order to develop and prototype that project? Okay. This was a challenging project in, from that point of view, May, because the OT was changing jobs halfway during the project. And so she became incommunicado. I couldn't get in touch with her. So I guess I had to play occupational therapist myself a little bit. and I took the project up to the point of that layout and the holes and said, this is how I've, I've progressed this busy board, um, activity board. Are you happy with that? And thankfully she was. So um, I got a tick off. I got it ticked off. Wonderful. Does anybody else have any questions for Peter? That's okay. Going once, going twice. No, I think you're off the hook there, Peter. But thank okay. you very much for your presentation. It was thanks. wonderful. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming along today. That concludes the Tech Talk for today.